And hopefully if you do that, then you'll also be, um, maybe the more interactive you'll be able to get the gift card. I don't know. And I think maybe uh, we'll be, uh, they'll grab a, a couple pieces of paper and a pen, or you can use your computer to take notes. We will pause later for that. So you do not have to do that right now. Um, this is, I would say, safe and confidential space. We are recording this now, but I want to let you know that Anna and I are here to kind of create this space where we can kind of explore and be mindful together, and that this is a judgment-free zone. So the idea is just kind of like in support groups or other on environments. I know there are some students on this call as well, is that, uh, you know, active listening as well as uh, not here to fix fix issues or anything but to listen and to compliment if we people do share back uh and suggestions uh but first i want to check in to see how you're all feeling now like how you're all feeling today if you could just put one word in the chat box about how you're feeling right now uh, there's a little kind of different uh emojis if you're to send emoji out or something for somebody how are you feeling I'm, I'm feeling pretty excited right now. I don't know if some of you are feeling tired or, oh, you guys are sending emojis. That's so great. I meant one words, but that is so fun. You guys were so literal on that. I was so, I can't even see those in my eyes. I was thinking of one word, but I love that you responded with emojis. Am I supposed to guess what those happy, happy, frustrated? Um, are, is that happy or the, the big smiles? I think those are happy. Oh, sending love. Thank you. Like feeling loved. Is that? Yeah. So yeah, either emojis or words um, about how you're feeling right now. So thank you for, for participating in that. Yes. And you hear my dog, Curtis, there is, he's always good, but there are gardeners next door. So hopefully they won't come closer. I'm still trying to figure out the gardener schedule here because I just moved into this new space. So that's kind of what we're here. But before we start, as we continue to start, Whoop. Oh, I hate when this happens. I try to do it differently. It's time to breathe. Because I know coming onto this call and just being here and really separating this space out, sometimes we rush to get here. We all bring a lot of stuff, especially caregivers, your minds, it's monkey mind all the time. Um, and that's just natural, but I want us to kind of gather and just to be present today together. And so I start most of my talks like this and hopefully Curtis won't bark, um, <laughs> is a four, seven, eight breath. And what that means is, I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Peter Weil is, he does this, you breathe in for four, hold for seven, breathe out for eight. We're gonna do that three times to kind of ground us in being together. So you can close your eyes or not. <laughs> I can't see, but if you want to close your eyes, take a deep breath out and breathe in two, three, four, hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in two, three, four, hold two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We don't Thank you. Thank you for taking that time for yourself for me. I sometimes need that as well to, to move from one, you know, from being present with you. So I do that just as much as for me as for you. We sometimes forget to breathe. I mean, it's we hold it, you know, you feel that feeling when you hold it, when something happens all of a sudden. So thank you for giving yourself time to do that today. And I, okay, so what image comes to mind when I say safety to you? Think about it for a second. If you want to add it in the chat box, that would be great. And I'm going to put my dog outside. Think about when you have an image, what image comes to mind just right now in this instant? There might be a lot of things, just one or two things if you want to put it in the chat box.
All right, what do we have? Family, safety, my home, home, safety. So you think of safety as what, what provides you with safety. That's what I'm thinking. That I'm seeing when your images come to safety, your home, that provides you safety. Oh, that's family. Thank you all for sharing that. It's interesting because when I thought of safety, I guess it would, when I said safety, so that was interesting. What kind of came to mind for me were what are the things that we have that provides us safety? And I think I was going, what else in our world, our societal world, or why we have things that are safety? Seatbelts, those are kind of safety. Caution signs, masks are a big one right now. <laughs> And for everybody, it's different types of masks for safety. So it kind of vary, there's variations for people. Goggles to protect your eyes if you're doing work or in the pool, you know, safety. So I took it, that's, I love that. I took it a different way in terms of what are some safety features, um, you know, that we use to take precautions in this world. They're, and they're all set up different ways. Some are legally set up, some are societal. Um, a lot of you guys talk about cultural, like cultural and um, really intimate safety features, and that's your family and your home. I guess when we talk about the intrinsic needs of safety, it's it's shelter and food and water. You know, I forgot the um, the Erickson basic uh, hierarchy of safety. You know, ho home and food and shelter. You know, shelter is part of that, but the real family. Well, what we're here to talk about today is safety for caregivers. And, and, and also their loved ones that they take care of. And I kind of looked at it six different levels of safety because usually when it would talk to family members, it's hard to always agree on what's important and what's a priority. But if we use the word safety, can we all agree on safety? You know, if you have many, you know, if you, whoever you're talking about, I mean, people might have different variations of what safety means, just like you and I did. But if we wanna get a little bit closer is for caregivers, the idea of safety can mean a lot of different things. And so it's a term that I believe can has a lot more, not as much, much emotional layers or feeling around it. It's like safety and this is what I mean by safety. So I want us to break it down and we're gonna be going through these a little bit later. Medical, legal, emotional, mental, physical, financial and spiritual safety for both the family caregiver in you, the care, you know, the care partner. And this is for everybody. This, if, if you, I know there's a lot of students on here, you can look at this in terms of working with families, but also for yourself. It's the same kind of thing of like, what does safety mean for us and what are our priorities? Yes, I think we all want an emergency, like a, I don't know if you all have an earthquake kit yet or emergency kit, but that's the kind of stuff. But that's kind of what we're here today. And before we go into these different areas of safety and really break it down for yourselves as individuals, and that's why it's interactive, because I'm giving you an opportunity, I want to facilitate an opportunity for you to dive into what does safety mean to you and what are those priorities, because these are all important areas, all right, and we'll kind of go through that a little bit more. First, before we get into that, I told you advanced care planning um, is important to me. So I want to get a sense from you of what are the components of a comprehensive estate plan. Now, this is larger than a, you know, advanced care plan, and I'll, I'll break that down. But if any of you guys can answer the questions and put the, the answer in the chat box, what are the com components of a comprehensive estate plan? A, a will, B, trust, C, power of attorney for finances. D, power of attorney for healthcare, which is, you know, healthcare directive and living will, all the above or none of the above. I hope this terminology is, this is usually legalese kind of language, but it doesn't matter how much um, money you have or finances, um, it's important to have, um, uh, have all this. E, okay, all the above, great, E, E, great, C, okay. So it is actually, E. So these are some of the basic components when I very keep it simplified. And this kind of revolves around all levels of safety. Okay. Um, especially financial, legal, health, but nobody's really responsible for having this conversation with people. You usually go to an elder law attorney or you can go to a case manner, but the, the will and the trust are both 
um, are involved with the financial ends of things. Like I'm sure one generation's had many talks having a state elder law attorneys or to talk about these different areas. The will and the trust are more dealing with the financial areas of, of um, your estate plan um, and dealing with beneficiaries. And those two things go into play, play after somebody dies. So if they have any assets or anything like that. The power of attorney for finances and the power of attorney for health. Those are documents that everybody, if you're 18 years or older, should have. All right. And you don't need a lawyer for those two things. The power of attorney for finances is for that, that um, if, you're, if you don't have the capacity to speak for yourself, who would you want to speak for you? Who would you want to have your, as your agent or your surrogate? And the power of attorney for health, it's usually combines two things. It's an advanced health care directive, which usually states who's going to speak for you if you can't speak for yourself, your agent, you know, your surrogate, your decision making maker, and a living will as what are the sustaining treatments you want or don't want at end of life. All right. So that is a complete package of like safety all around for you as a person, for your own health, if you can't speak for yourself, as well as after you die. This can save, it becomes more of a legal issue, but I, for many families, the distress that it brings, the emotional distress, if these things aren't in play before or after somebody dies, can be huge. So that's why um, I talk about this. And within, within this context, oops, excuse me, ah, okay, um, is the advanced care plan, all right? So here's another question for you. Um, where are you with your advanced care plan? What, A, what is an advanced health care plan, health care plan? B, not sure where to start. C, I have had conversations. D, I think I have one, but not sure where it is. E, it is completed, signed, and I have conversation with my family and healthcare team. Also, everyone has copies. F, my dog ate it, and G, other, add your answer. And if this is something that most people aren't familiar with, Anna, I suggest this might be another topic for us to, I did a myth, with one generation, I did a myth busters on advanced care plans. So that's the topic that I did last time. Yeah, B and C, not sure where to start, have had conversations. The, the, me, the main thing is to have conversations with people about what's important to you. A lot of people I know for, for many that are in situation, you know, that are caring for somebody with Alzheimer's and dementia, they've known from their experience of um, if they don't have the capacity to speak for themselves, what, what is quality of life for them? And so that's why these conversations are so important sooner than later, because you've learned from your own experience um, and like watching different movies or shows or TV, you can say, oh, I don't, I wouldn't, that's not quality of life living for me. So I'm glad that many of you have had the conversations and there's a lot of resources out there. So that's what it is. Advanced care planning is the process of planning for your current and future health care. Um, and that's what this is spe specifically for. It, it involves talking about your values, beliefs, and preferences um, with your loved ones and your doctor and your team. Okay, and this is just a quick overview of the different avenues around advanced care directives, um, the different components that are in there. Like I said, if you're 18 years or older, you should be working on this. But there's nobody really assigned in our system right now to do it. The healthcare system and the legalese team are kind of there, but it's not like a guaranteed. Um, but as you know, conversations are so important because it's about quality of life. Um, so that, that's one thing to, to be a part of. And also just another thing to know if you're Medicare age, um, there is a code, a doctor code to have these conversations there to have advanced care planning conversations. So if you're Medicare age or you're working with somebody, this can always be part of the wellness checkup every year. So I do a whole talk on this. I know I spent some time because I think it is so important for safety to get these things in order. All right. And so that I just want to leave it at that. All right. Okay, so here we go. Exploring caregiver safety. Um, I'm gonna pause now. I wanna make sure you all have uh, a paper or computer or something to write with or your you know, drink of choice. 
I have my tea here. So if I can just get like um, um, some uh, in the chat that you're ready to go, just a ready from everybody that you're ready, like you have your stuff and you're ready to go so we can move forward. Or, or I know you guys are so good emojis, like a, a thumbs up. <laughs> a thumbs up because you guys are so good on the emojis. Thumbs up or ready. Cool. Um, so also along with the pen, paper, you know, um, is to have an openness for to check in with yourself about some of these priorities. Um, I'm not here to overwhelm you with your like to do list. It's kind of honing in um, and then also checking in to see what what you you are doing and what's going well or what is more urgency than others. So to really reflect on that. And when we look through these safety priorities, we're looking at it for your person who you're caring for and for you. So I, you know, I, and I, I wrote this for your person, not your loved one or who your care partner is, because, you know, you fill in the person's name or it can just be your name or it can be honey, it can be sweetheart, like whoever you're caring for. You know, I want you to fill in that person's, like how you refer to them, like what's important to them. Or it could be grandma, it could be nanny. I don't, whoever it is, it could be your neighbor. So I, I didn't say loved one because I don't know everybody's circumstances. And some people, as we know, people, some people, individuals that are caregivers are caring for somebody that they didn't have a good relationship with. So I wanna be conscious of that, right, Anna? Like everybody has, it's dynamic. And um, so I didn't want to put words in there for you. And I don't know if there's another word, Anna, that's better, or, you know, and, and so that's why I just said, I think we always say for, for your person, you know, the priorities for, for your person, whoever they are, whoever you want to, hopefully it's a positive name, not a negative name, because you are putting a lot of energy in supporting them. Um, so I just want to give you permission and, and acknowledge that. Okay, so now we're going to be going through the different categories. And we're going to start with medical, because when we talk about what's, especially in the caregiving role, right, medical always comes up first, right, and in, in relation to the safety and priorities. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to think about what medically, in terms of their safety, is important for that person. Is it medication management? Is it getting the proper diagnosis? Is it treat treatments? Is it getting the right healthcare team or doctors? Or are things really good right now? Like everything's steady. There's no, it's just maintenance. You know, figuring out like the, um, you know, care plan. And that's overall everything as well. All right. So that's medical, what's important for you, for your person and for you. It could even be insurance, like getting that figured out. The calls, you can be as specific or broad as you want. Like, you know, your things to do, like it's like, oh, I need to make an appointment for that doctor. You know, that's the priority. It's like, oh, it's been, you know, it's time for that annual checkup. Let's make that appointment. That's a priority right now, very specific. So it can be very specific or broad. So I want you to see what works for you. I would try to be as specific as possible because that's easier to attain sometimes than the broad, like, you know, overall. So just think about that. Um, it, it maybe it's picking up the prescription today. <laughs> okay. And we're, okay. So that's that. Physical. I don't know if you can see this picture here. And it was actually interesting because physically, not being able to see the picture is part of it, right? If you're in a physical space that's dark and not well lit, that can be an issue. That's a physical issue in terms of your environment. These are winding stairways with carpet on it. You know, there's a tree, so there's some distractions. It's kind of disorienting. All right. What's in your physical and space and environment? that relates to safety for your person and for you. It might be their own physical abilities too, that they need, uh, you know, they, in terms of a bed, 
to, to sit in, you know, or a chair to get up and down for? Do they need other um, uh, medical um, equipment or a walker to help? And all these interplay, because I'm saying that about the walker to help them physically be more independent, which is what they want for safety. But then it could be a vanity thing, right? And that's like an emotional mental of like, okay, you know that the safety is important for them in terms of a walker, they want to be independent. But for, you know, a barrier for that is more of an emotional one is the vanity of it for somebody else. So is it your priority or theirs? I mean, these are your priorities for them, but it can also be from like their perspective too. So it can go both ways. Financial, as we know here, like money doesn't grow from trees. <laughs> and, and, and nowadays people are outliving their money. You know, we have such good care. We have such good programs, like people, like are living longer and if if they want to or not we don't know because right now the default in our healthcare system is more um is, is do everything so but the sometimes people the safety is is the financial what are the financial risks of of the level of care what can be managed and so that becomes a big thing for people in terms of safety fear, fear of money you know utilizing money most appropriately being able to access resources. Where are the resources? Identifying the resources. Okay. I hope this is a good speed for you guys to go through this for yourself. Legal. Family dynamics, grief, and expectations are big things that come up. And what ends up solving it is not the families or mediation, it's usually in the legal court systems. And it can get messy and ugly. And so are you going through something like that right now? Is there a conservatorship? Is there not having what we call the power of attorney for finances and health to be able to speak on behalf of that person because you don't have the conversations not in writing? that there's not a document, advanced care directive document that was witnessed. So, and then it comes to the courts to take care of it all. So what do you have in place? So, you know, investing in the planning so it's not afterwards, especially when it comes to, you know, with houses afterwards, the, pro, the probates and all that. So that's, I don't get into the legalese stuff. It's, it's very more tedious, but it becomes very emotional as well. So is there any priorities there? Maybe there isn't, maybe, but this is a safety, but maybe there's really nothing going on here. You've, you've gone through your planning and everything's okay right now. But this is also when you have blended families. This can also be, you know, people, you know, people live longer and they have new relationships. And where does that sit? And also with caregivers, you know, if you have paid care, like, uh, you know, paid caregivers, how are they set up? Are you protected? Elder abuse. So that's kind of the safety, like how, like uh, for your priorities for your, for your person could be, I, I can't have them answer phones because, you know, they, they'll give and share with everybody. There's a lot of <laughs> different areas of safety, isn't there? We have to think about, you know, making sure you get on that do not call list. Emotional and mental safety for both your person and for you. Look, these are these eggs aren't cracked. I mean, they have faces on them, but they're not. I kind of I thought that was sweet. It's like okay, um, yeah, it, it, you know, especially dealing with individuals with dementia. You know, they live in this moment and it's all about just what they're feeling and, and dealing with the, this, the, the behaviors in this moment. And it's trying to um, kind of be an investigator to find out what that is, what's bothering them, what's going on. And sometimes it could be, you know, a physical thing like a UTI, or sometimes it could be that they, you know, haven't been touched or 
in a long time, all they want is a human touch and a smile and something kind to pass them by. And then the mental, emotional, mental stress of just the overwhelming responsibility and then maybe not so much time for yourself. We know that caregiver stress, that idea of taking care, like it's kind of in our DNA to be of service and to help others, but um, we, you know, it's just checking in with ourselves and making sure that um, it's easier said than done, easier said than done. But um, do you have those support systems um, and things in place for yourself? And if that's, you know, um, you know, medically supported, emotional, mental support, clinical support, or, you know, going for a run or even a walk <laughs> or gardening or having things for that. And that also leads us into spiritual because we might forget about that safety, that, that inner, like what gives us life, light, what makes us who we are, right? It's not religious, it's spiritual, but spiritual is like where, what brings you joy? Is it in church? Is it listening to music? Um, for me, it's nature. This picture that I have here is actually what I utilize um, on my, my site because it just, it, you know, it's inspiring me. I love the growth. I love the roots. I love, you know, there's a lot of energy in that for me. And so that's why I, I chose that person. So what's important? Is it you know, the ice cream, you know, ice cream can be a spiritual experience if you haven't had it for a while, right? You know, you know, there's certain things when you eat, right? Or even being a community, you know, you're all saying what brings you safety is home and family, you know, spirituality is the home, where's that safety? So that's, that, that actually overcompasses everything. I wanted to dive a little bit into the spiritual stuff and then I want to kind of get some feedback from you on some of the other areas. So I wanted to bring it, break down the spiritual a little bit more into a sensory experience, right? And you can write this on, I didn't write this down, but the first picture up here is what, what brings you comfort, that spiritual, what brings you comfort and also your love, we'll do both, your person and you, okay? So I'm going to add this. Hopefully you're not running out of, hopefully you got a big piece of paper and not like a post-it. Music. What kind of music brings you comfort? Try to be as specific as possible. for your person and for you? Is there a certain type of, a lot of people go to classic, go classical. Some people, I don't know, did anybody say punk? Nobody said punk rock. But some people like, actually, it, that resonates for a lot of people because that brings you comfort. That means you can rock out and get that energy out. Get that anger out. So that can bring people comfort to be able to encourage that. Um, so we have the hearing, we have the visual, we have the seeing. When you see something, when you see someone, what provides you comfort and safety? How about touch? You know, is, that, is there a blanket that you had growing up? Is your favorite sweater or having my, you know, having a pet nearby or baby nearby, like, you know, touch is so important. Taste, what brings you comfort? What taste for your person and for you?
if there are people or things that bring you comfort. And this is it's so funny because this is different. You know, a lot of times you're like, what if you're stuck in an island? What are the three or four things that <laughs> you would take with you? Comfort, uh, you know, it's usually mostly technical <laughs> tech tech things, right? But what would, it's kind of interesting to look at it. Like does that, would that list be the same? Did I skip any? We got seeing, hearing, taste, touch. Did I miss anything, Anna? Person or thing? No. Smell. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. I knew I was missing something. I'm like, I know. And that's such an important one. I mean, you know, it's interesting during COVID, right? A lot was a lot of the side effects you would hear about from people. And it's like, that really played havoc on people. That idea of not having that smell, which I guess affected the taste as well. Um, and that um, mentally, that was really hard on like one of those side effects. So that came up more smell. I guess I don't have a picture for that. What do I love the smell of? I like that, you know, I've been, I've been using oils more in the bergamot, which is more of an um, earthy, like a um, part of the plant family. So I'm really liking that right now. Old school R&B, yeah, it's the music. So yeah, actually this is where I'm gonna take a pause right now and see, cause we got some time. I'm going through this quick. So I, this is like I said, it was interaction, interactive. Um, Oops, I'm going to do that. So let's do a safety review. Does anybody, this is kind of, I'm really curious what's shown up for you and if there's any safety, what's showed up for you? If anybody wants to go off mute and share. Anna, do you want to get started about What's something that surprised you or not surprised? And what two things, like what surprised you and what didn't about your safety and uh, list? I, I mean, I think for me, what really resonated, I'm not sure this is exactly responding, but is that importance of using the sensory experience? Because I think that's a piece that people forget is just being very responsive to our own needs, um, you know, and making sure this whole thing this whole discussion of taking care of our own safety and how important that is in, in caring for ourselves and being available to care for somebody else. And that if we don't respond to our own needs that we can't be there for the other person. Right. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah. No, and just the sensory part of that and how important that is. And also the reminders about the all the legal and everything, that's always such a helpful reminder. So can you give us something more specific for yourself? I think for me, um, what a visual for me is like the ocean. When I see like ocean and, and the sound of water, those are very, those create a lot of sense of safety for me. That's, those mm -hmm. are very reassuring, um, very comforting images and sounds. Beautiful. So, you know, do, um, do you happen to have on your, a playlist or anything, or do you have nature sounds? Don't. I don't, but that's an area to start. Yeah, so that, you know, one of these kind of safety priorities, knowing that you have that, and um, that's kind of, you know, there's not that much to, to be able to get a white noise machine or go onto YouTube and go onto ocean sounds, and you'll get both, you'll get too much. Yeah, so true. I encourage you to, um, and I, you know, maybe have that as background, but that's something that's a very good, thank you for sharing that, Anna, yeah, and just- being able to bring that in and just go to YouTube and be like, mm -hmm. wait, like ocean sounds. Mm -hmm. And then a good reminder. Get, yeah. yeah, ocean sounds. So when are you going to do that by? I will do that by tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Anna, for sharing. Yes. Who, who else will be kind of courageous enough to kind of share there for, you know, for yourself or for others that kind of should have unexpectedly or, or not. Who else would like to share? You can do it in chat or you can do it. You can take yourself off mute. You don't have to show yourself.
Hi. Hi, Elsa. Hi, hi. Hi. So, so I, I came into the meeting a little bit late because okay. I was doing things in the kitchen, but I caught all this part about uh, thinking about our safety and uh, the priorities, right? Yes. Um, so I saw on your um, on your presentation about the financial, and it just reminded me. My husband and I started our um, uh, what do you call it? The the plan at the end, like well, it's a comprehensive estate plan, which estate covers plan. your will, trust, your power of attorney for health and finances. All of that. We started that years ago with some people. And there was some conflict on some wording and some stuff, and we never finished it. So this was a really good reminder to finish that. That's for us, not for my mom. My mom doesn't really have anything. She, she doesn't have anything. She's never worked in this country. She doesn't have any assets or properties or anything. So we don't have to worry about any of that for my mom. There's no financial situation to take care of, only like her medical and uh, her physical safety around the house, which we are very careful with her. We're always next to her, except for right now, because I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elsa, that was a perfect example of reflecting for yourself and for your mom with things that differ, right? Right. Putting together a comprehensive estate plan, and it's not uncommon for people to start and not come back to it. But that's a peace of mind safety for, for both of you to come together with. So it's basically called a comprehensive estate plan. And it's those four, you know, those four um, documents. Um, and, um, you know, Anna and I have resources for you in looking to kind of put the whole thing together and also be kind to yourself for this process. You know, yeah. I think it's great to come back to it, but maybe like, okay, I'd like to have this done by like the end of the year, you know, because, yeah. it, because the stuff that can get pretty tedious, but I'm glad. And then, and then and on the same note, knowing well, that's, that's not a priority for your mom. You're able to take care of her, but for right. her, it's about being comfortable and safe, physically safe, right. As much right. as you can be. So thank you that yeah. Elsa for sharing, for sharing that. I appreciate it. And so glad you're here with us. Thank you for listening. One more thing that we, my husband and I just did. So we do need to finalize our estate planning, but for her, what we just did this past week, we, uh, we bought a funeral plan. I think that's important to have done and so that you can be ready. You can be ready for whatever is gonna happen and then you don't have to worry about it at the last minute. You don't have to scramble at the last minute and pay huge amounts of money at the last that is minute. a financial yes elsa the, good for you that that's a gift mm -hmm. it's a yeah. gift so when your mother does die because mm -hmm. we all die that yep. you could just be with her and have others be there for you without having to figure find you know get involved with the financial conversation so I think it's so good. Now, did you do that because you there's another experience that you had that led you to do that? Or was it just something you're kind of checking off your list? Like what made you decide to do that now? Uh, she, sorry. Uh, okay. She hasn't been doing very well. And um, she's, her dementia is getting worse. And um, um, there was a nurse that was here last week who said she seemed to be in the final stages of dementia and it just seemed to happen so fast. Oh. She had a hospitalization in August for three weeks and ever since she came back, it's been really difficult to care for her. Yeah. And I'm exhausted. And uh, I just don't, I don't have anybody to physically support me except my husband sometimes, but he has to go to work so I can stay home with my mom. And, and it's just been really hard. But that's why we decided to, we needed to plan that thing so that when the time comes, we don't have to worry about, yeah. you know, that last minute, super expensive thing. It's yeah. so expensive, but 
um, it's they're letting us make some payments. So it's gonna be okay with that part. But yeah, we just wanted to have like the peace of mind to that we weren't gonna be scrambling and not knowing what to do. So we had- That's, that's very brave of you. That's very brave of acknowledging and so what you can do now because you're not in denial. Doesn't mean it's easy. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sharing, Elsa. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And, you know, the idea, and I don't think we, it, it's so fast, right? But there's all this grief and to support for grief. We always talk about the different, you know, dealing with dementia and the change because it's such a long journey. And then you can have a, um, a hospitalization and things can turn really fast. And um, Elsa, if you want to talk um, more about hospice care, which is about comfort, not curative care for mom at this point, that's something I wanna make sure you have some good education on. It doesn't take, a, it doesn't take the role that you're, that really present role that you're doing for mom, but it's another safety um, support system of medical care that comes to you. And I just want to make sure that you're, you're familiar with it. Um, and you have the right uh, education about that. So Elsa, if you really, um, I, you know, if that's something that you, because I, I feel like in terms of support in the home, this is additional medical support and a team approach that can be there for you. So we can, if you want to talk about that more. Yes, I would like to do that. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay, thank you for that. Um, being vulnerable and sharing, um, really appreciate that, Elsa. Is there anybody else? We have some time that somebody else would that like to share their their safety priorities and uh, concerns, surprises, or next steps they might do. And if you're a student, love to still hear from, from you as well, from your own experience. You don't have to be a caregiver yourself. Love to kind of see how this resonated uh, for you as well. Cause I think we can all, we can all benefit from this. So if it's just you you're caring for, um, love to hear from you as well. Anybody else? There's an opportunity for you to kind of check in with yourself more specifically. Or write in the write in the chat some of the surprises. All right. So one of the next exercises that we're going to do is I was trying to think of a sign like you know there's all these safety signs out there right so I'm curious what your safety sign kind of gathering all that would be for yourself more of a protection it could be more of an affirmation sign or a, uh, what would your sign say if you were to put like if there is like a protection safety sign, like what would it say for you? What would your sign say? It's kind of like, what is that one priority or one thing or an overview? So Chris, thank you for asking. It can go anyway. It can be very specific of something that is kind of like that you need to do for yourself. Like um, my sign says, um, you know, I want to um, make sure that the lock is working on the, on the gate. That's my main sign right now. <laughs> make sure the lock gates, or you could be like, I am, I'm doing the best that I can with what I have. Or 
or it's like I'm doing the safety dance. So it can be whatever kind of resonates for you that you want to show up and, and show that's for you, like for, that's out there to like you, you see a sign and that speaks to you in terms of what you need to hear. Take it day by day. Namaste. Nice. Take it day by day. Namaste. Beautiful. I kind of like Chris, I like yours. Mm, can you detail further? Like get more clarity. <laughs> I don't know if that's your safety sign, but that could be it too. Like what's like, okay, I need it. I need to like, I'm doing this exercise and I'm, I'm too afraid. Like breathe, right? Roll with it. Roll with it. Be aware, but roll with it, right? Because if we keep it inside, it's, it's not healthy for us, right? All our different ways, mentally and emotionally, all these different ways. Yeah. My, I think my sign would say, drink more water. <laughs> I think that's kind of what my sign would say right now. <laughs> that's the one sign, right? Yeah, Camille, right? <laughs> drink more water. Um, and it'll be this, and then for, you know, Anna would be like a wave. It could just be an image. It's like a wave, right? Oh, like, yes. So this was just all an exercise to be kind of, once again, going back to when I would be sitting at, when I used to run a free resource and support center for family caregivers and families were in conflict and there were siblings, one was living locally and one was far away and they both knew what was best for mom or had different opinions on it because it's a different perspective. It's a different relationship, right? Family dynamics, grief, and expectations always gotten in the way. Okay, what can we agree on? What safety? Okay. Okay, safety. That's very general. Let's break it down a little bit more. So we know right now it's more important that mom lives in a house where there's no, um, that that's locked, you know, that she can't wander, that somebody's there with her. That's the priority more than, you know, they're all priorities, but like, that's an immediate priority. And then like maybe making a dentist appointment, which can be a week out. So there's different priorities, but this, you can be like, okay, say what this one safety could be like your, 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 your siblings and one's yours. So coming together, but right now for your mom, her safety is that she needs to know that she's loved and safe and a hug. So it's so dynamic and so much easier said than done. But if we can break it down and like use that term and be like, okay, I hear you. This is where I'm dealing with safety. This is how you are. We're all talking about safety, but it looks a little different. Ooh, is there anything else people wanted to add on to that uh, of their thoughts? If there's uh, something that you feel I missed in terms of safety, like in terms of like, wow, this is really different than what I was expecting. Or did you not have any expectations? That would be good too. <laughs> I don't know. All right, so I think we have some time because, um, so I just wanted to share a little bit about kind of like my role right now is, um, is I'm an elder care manager and an end of life doula. So I kind of, for me, it's about, and that's why I'm so glad that Elsa, you shared because the journey of the caregiver and the healthcare and everything does, it's a journey. And at the end, we all, we all die and it doesn't mean it's easy, but just to be acknowledge it and name it. And I don't think that's necessarily always we, we live in a death denying culture and there's a lot of death anxiety. So when I work as a care coordinator in you know, care management and working with families, coaching them, making sure they have their advanced care planning stuff in place, 
um, making sure they have caregivers in the home to manage that care. Um, so that's part of what I do, but also the end of life doula, a doula means in Greek, just to uh, be of service. And the idea of there is a transition of, you know, uh, from curative to comfort care. And with that, it's the emotional, spiritual, and practical support beyond the medical system. Because that's really what we, we live in. I mean, all like one generation in Alzheimer's to say, you know, those organizations are also a safety net. They're not necessarily clinical. And that's why we partner so, like, so well, because they're about the psychosocial, the spirit, that person. It's person care. It's human-centered care. And so I think at end of life, which is such a unique and dynamic place that some people also need more guidance and support there because they, we always came with the fear that it's wrong, that it's bad, like that death is always the enemy. And that's not, I'm just naming it. And so I want to hold space for people to do that. I also worked, um, my, 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 I worked with family caregivers dealing with Alzheimer's and other memory impairments. And that's where Anna and I, I ran a, um, a care, you know, I ran that for eight and a half years. But at that time, I realized the conversations around and advanced care and end of life planning were the ones that people weren't really showing. It was hard. It's hard. <laughs> and so that's when I got to work for Compassion and Choices, which is a national nonprofit focusing on improving care and expanding choice at end of life. Um, and so I worked on the California Medical, uh, California End of Life Option Act. And so I know a lot about that law, which is not really uh, individuals with uh, dementia aren't eligible. That's a whole other talk as well, Hannah, that I could uh, do. But um, I think this is still the part of safety in terms of wherever I work with anybody, what are their priorities? It's not mine. I mean, there's certain things that we talk about and, uh, and you know, what what one generation, especially the adult day program, they're providing so much safety of what we're talking about, right, Anna? Like all these areas provide support for, for the person and for um, the yeah. caregiver. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I'm done. And I, I kind of reached, I thought, you know, I'm um, thank you for interacting with way that was comfortable for you. Um, if you're interested in, in learning more, I do have complimentary discovery calls. Um, you continue to breathe. We can do that again, or if there's any questions or comments or thoughts, uh, I welcome that. And I can leave it open a little bit. So if other people want to have a like a, a conversation after we end, I'll leave it open for a little bit if anybody would like to do that. Yeah. So and Stephanie, I just want to say thank you. I, I so appreciate your time and giving of your expertise. I feel like this was such a nice reminder, introduction, overview. It really provided a lot of different perspectives based on where the person was. So I, I thank yeah. you very much for that. I, I was very helpful. Yeah, um, and this is a, we have a great series going on. I mean, you have many different org so many great community yeah. partners that you're working with. So right. thank you for including me in Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And with that, just a plug for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's session, tomorrow at 12 o'clock is with the Center for Healthcare Rights. And they'll be presenting on how oh. Medicare works with Medi-Cal. So it's an important topic for anybody who, who has Medicare and Medi-Cal or is possibly going down that road. So hope you will join us for that as well. That's um, a big safety one that might've been on your list. <laughs> that is a big safety <laughs> That covers one. all the areas too. Yeah, that is very true. And then just in terms of to finish up for the raffle, I, I had several people interested, but the name that I drew from, I did a, a spin, I chose a name and the person who came up was Camille. Is it Ibe? Camille, if you're, I see your name, but I just, yes. Okay. Camille, if you could just send me a message with your email address. Um, so I have that, that would be great. And I'll send that to you today. Um, so I just, again, want to thank all of you for joining us. It's, it's been wonderful. I appreciate the interaction and the sharing, and I do hope we'll see or hear from many of you tomorrow as well. And again, thank you to you, Stephanie. Thank you. Namaste. Okay.
Namaste. And I will keep it open. If they if feel free, we're going to end. But if you do have questions or want to stay on for a minute, I'll keep the, the link. I'll keep it open. Bye. Thank you. And if you do have questions, feel free to unmute and um, to jump in because it's just me, um, Stephanie, and then a couple of others still left. Yeah, I, I get to about 105, I can do. Okay. Elsa, thank you so much for sharing. And Elsa, um, I did. Yes, Camille, you're good. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Just send me an email with your, um, your. I put my email in chat. I'll send it again. Just send me an email with your email address and I'll send it out to you. Uh, you are good to go. Oh, and I guess Elsa too. Okay. Okay. I just want to wait a minute. Okay. Just also with Elsa, I was chatting with her. She's one of our clients. Yes. Sorry. But her, so I'm going to email her. I'm going to connect her with, we have a psych social worker who can do some individual therapy also. Okay, so good. I was messaging her in the background. Oh, good. Um, That's so great. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to try to connect her with that. We knew she was struggling, but I, oh my God. So I will, um, I'm so, so glad know. she felt comfortable sharing, you know. Oh that my goodness, me too. She's one, they're really wonderful. I mean, they've always been so open to sharing their journey. They've participated in forums and things for us. They've always been very open to sharing their journey and how things have been for them. So it yeah, was, I'm glad she, I'm glad she showed up and I'm glad she shared. Yeah. Okay. Was that the only caregiver or was no, there... there were a couple of others. I was a little, I, Evelyn was very quiet. I thought she would share more. Um, but there were a few others that just oh, stayed a little quiet. So, yeah, um, I mean, I, it's interesting that they, I mean, this was supposed to be very interactive. I so know, the fact that I was able I to stretch it, it, I know, I know. You the fact great, that I was though. able to stretch it out, like, yeah. do you think people were engaged or do you think they were doing like other things? Like, I, I, so hard to tell. I think the caregivers were at, um, I do, well, obviously Elsa. So that was great. And then, you know, it's a little hard to say, but I, I mean, you did get, was not as interactive as I was like, come on guys. But no, um, but it was good. I felt like I, I felt good about the silence. Like I don't, you know, I yeah. don't usually do that as long, but I just kind of like, yeah. we have, we have the time. I'm not, I didn't feel like I felt, mm -hmm. I actually felt really good about it. I good. Like, I and, well. I mean, do you? They did participate in chat. I know people are a little shy sometimes on zoom. So I was glad to see that they did also participate in the chat. So do, if any mean, other feedback from this presentation, do you think was it too generic? I mean, I, it, it was a different perspective of what we always talk about, right? Yeah, it was a. I I I mean, for me, I feel like it hit on it. It was for, for at a variety of levels in terms of people at various stages, because it was a nice reminder, like for Elsa, who had started some of this planning before, but it had dropped off. So I felt like it was a nice reminder. And then for newer people, I think it provided good information. So I felt like it was a good mix. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, I'll continue it. All right. And well, I think what I'm going to do is I, I had a, like a working document so I can always send a work, you know, like a working document in advance. So then as a PDF, I can okay. always send it out. But I, I feel like this is a good different um different way of presenting information mm -hmm. and maybe the different examples. I don't know if you, you in your head, you had different examples, but anyways, I I'd have to think that's about so funny with, I brought up safety. Everybody I know that was very it. different. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. Love that. And it was mostly students who responded to that one. So yeah. that may have been different versus like a family caregiver and what they would have responded. Cause it was almost all students. Who yeah. Cause I was going to be like, yeah. Um, but anyways, so thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. We'll stay in touch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take care, bye. Stephanie. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. bye.